This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is our public affairs show right here at Amherst Media and we thank the League of Women Voters for their continuing assistance in our program development and, and helping us uh, identify subjects and interesting people and things to talk about. And tonight we have a very interesting thing to talk about. We are looking at the reorganization of the committees of our town council right. as it's entering its second year. We're about two months in, mm -hmm. and our listeners may remember that we developed a whole bunch of new committees coming out of the charter and out of the work of the council. And mm -hmm. George Ryan here is a town councilor and chair of the committee that's called GAL, which is Governance, Organization, and Legislation. That's correct. And um, George, we're going to talk tonight a little bit about what changes have been made with regard to the committees. These are the standing committees of the town council right. and why those changes got made. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it's only a year old, and you had to put a lot of things together very quickly in the first year, and you got a lot of it right in terms of the committees well, and the kind, organizational kind of structure <laughs> and all of that. But you had to review and revise, and yeah. we're going to be talking about that exactly. now. So there were five. That's right. Now they're going to be four. That's eventually four, so yes. So let's yeah. start at the beginning. Right. The Gall Committee is going to continue. Yes. Uh, our task is, uh, as you said, is every year to sort of look over the committee structure and see if there's any changes, improvements we can make as part of our charge as a committee. So governance is, falls under governance. And at the end of the first year, in November, actually, we started looking at it. And we got input from counselors, and we had, obviously, our own discussions. And we felt that there's some changes that we could make that might improve the efficiency of the council, would make it easier for them to see where things should be referred, and hopefully would actually cut down one, at least one. We were hoping to go, we, there are five, there were, there are, still are five committees. We're hoping to cut it down to four. So we wanted to also maybe lessen some of the demand on counselors' time. Um, so with those motives in mind, um, we looked at the, the, the structure as it was at the time. And an easy one was to move audit into finance. So um, like any town or city, we have a finance committee. And, and we also had an independent audit committee with three members. So that was an easy one. That happened fairly quickly. Audit was moved to finance. Um, but the real challenge we felt, and I think we had a number of counselors agree with us, uh, not just on our committee, was what the committee called Community Resources, CRC which uh, many counselors felt really was the grab bag committee, everything of any substance. Or and that was the last committee established, That's wasn't correct, it? Yeah. right. Okay. And even at the time, I know uh, President Griesemer felt this way, and I think there are others that, you know, the, the, the remit that was just too big, but that's how we decided to do it. And after the first year, the feeling was definitely that committee needed some help. We needed to take some of its burden off and put it into another committee. And many towns and cities have a kind of, you know, a town services committee, sort of a, where the rubber meets the road committee, and, um, and that's what we felt we needed. So we, we turned to the task of seeing if we could construct a new committee uh, and still end up with less committees. So that was our, <laughs> our job. Um, so um, what we've done is taken uh, the, the task of CRC and divided into two. Um, CRC's uh, function, Committee Resources Committee, uh, its, its basic task is l longer range, larger issues, planning, zoning, um, those sorts of things, um, economic development in a broad sense, um, longer range issues, um, and um, master plan is a key component of that. And we wanted to leave that with them and take away from them the kinds of things that are more day-to-day, -day. basically the provision of town services that from by town departments. Um, and so that's we've created a, a separate committee called Town Services and Outreach. We'll talk about that in a moment, that aspect of it. But the Town Services part of it is basically a committee uh, devoted to uh, the provision of services by town departments. Um, and so all kinds of day-to-day of -day issues, parking, transportation, um, anything like that would fall. And I actually have a list here, I could read it to you, of the kinds of things that um, would fall now under this committee's uh, remit and uh, take a huge burden off CRC. 
So that was one major change was that basically, and the other had to do with appointments. Um, we, had, we had a committee, and still do for the moment, called Outreach, Communications, and Appointments, and that was from the start called OCA. And um, OCA found that, and I serve on OCA as well, we found that uh, our time was almost completely taken up with appointments, and that's something we've been working on. And it's been a challenge, and we, we feel we're getting there, um, but we really didn't have much time for outreach or communication. Um, and so what, when the dust finally settled, um, we have determined that appointments, we, we suggested to the council, that appointments be shared out by all, the, or amongst the other committees, rather than just have a single appointments committee. Mm -hmm. And so having made that suggestion, it then left outreach and communication, and we felt that by itself was not sufficient for a, a committee. And secondly, we weren't convinced that that's really a task that the council was really set up for. So we took the town services committee, added the O, and gave them the, the, the issue of outreach, uh, trying to continue the efforts that the councillors have made um, to be transparent in communication with their with their constituents, um, and at, and so that's how TSO became TSO. Terrific. So um, OCA is still going to stay in existence for uh, a few more months as we fine tune the appointments process. So at least initially, our goal of creating four committees has not quite been reached yet. But hopefully, well, actually, but you're heading there. Yeah, we, we have determined yeah. that at June 30. OCA will cease, and um, its appointments function will now be shared by out by different committees. So, for instance, the Community Resources Committee would take on the appointments which the council does make to Planning Board and Zoning Board. Um, that would be their So they're going to do, they'll be responsible for the appointments in areas that are relevant That's to their subject exact. matter. Exactly. That is exactly okay. the idea. And so, uh, so let's recap and let's make sure I got this right now. <laughs> so we need a blackboard. Um, the most, you know, everybody thinks the most, the biggest thing is the budget. The, so the finance committee Stays, continues. Right, yeah, exactly. We're going to still have a finance right, committee. Right. The governance, outreach, Organiz and legislation committee will still be in right, existence, right. and it will stay with the same charge. Yes, like yes. The CRC, the community uh, resources. resources committee, was too big, so we chopped off a little bit here and a little bit there. Right. And they're still going to exist, but yes. they're going to have a narrower uh, they're jurisdiction. They're focused narrow, yep. and they're, they're long, but it's long range planning. And, and they'll still be zoning. at the 10,000 square, f uh, 10,000 foot level, not That's square right. foot, 10,000 right. foot level. So they're looking at the big picture. That's right. But now we're going to have a new committee that's going to be looking at the smaller picture. Right, at the ground level. The ground level, the town services we receive, how are they working, mm -hmm. how, are, how are people getting what they, they mm -hmm. need. And that's all going to, uh, and that's the newest, that's, that's the yeah. new creation this right. year. Right. And that's what's going to go forward. So yeah. when every, when the dust settles, mm -hmm. we will have gone from five committees to four committees. That is correct. All the work that needs to be done will still be done. Yes. And we're giving committees of jurisdiction a bigger say on the appointments in the areas that they control. And that's part of how we skinny down the committee process mm -hmm. and um, our uh, capable commu uh, staff at town hall yes. is going to be continuing to do a lot of work in outreach and in communications yes. so that function will not those functions will not go away no, they will definitely not they're go just away. going to be where they belong which is it's really more about staff level as opposed to policy making because right. that's what the town council is is supposed to be that is really correct. about the right. policy yeah. so we've been through a year well mm -hmm. we're really 14 months yeah. at this point yeah uh, and we, we've basically, you guys got it pretty, pretty well the first time around. Well, thank and you. now, <laughs> and now you made a few changes. We're making some changes. And so, yeah. like, are we going to see this again this time next I hope, year? I hope not. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's hard to predict, but I certainly hope not. I think that we, every year, we, it is the, uh, part of the, the responsibility of GOL to look at the landscape and see how things are going. But I would be personally very surprised if we had another major change. One small area where it might happen or might tweak is the area of outreach. If we feel after a year again, or a little less than a year actually, with TSO uh, finds it's not really doing much in outreach simply because it has lots of other things it's doing and outreach is being taken care of so well by the community participation officers. Counselors are, are holding regular uh, district meetings. They, I have a newsletter. People meet with their, they have office hours. So we've actually been doing a very good job, I think. And so it's not clear that we really need a committee that's focused on that. On but, that function. But so at the end of the year, it may turn out that we'll agree and TSO will become TS.
<laughs> so you're looking in your crystal ball, yeah. there might be a little bit of change next year, yeah. but it won't be as much as this year. That's my and sense. And again, the, the, re the, the revolutionary year was last year because yeah. you had to stand up a, a new government right. based on the charter's provisions, yes. and they referenced certain committee functions and other things you guys came to right. the conclusion we needed to do something in this area. Yeah. That, and so you formed it. So organizational development experts use a phrase which is form follows function. Okay. So you basically right. have demonstrated yeah. in our town government how you've uh, brought that idea to life, yep. which is the way you organize mm -hmm. is based on the functions right. that needed to be done. Yeah. And you found uh, that you got uh, a, a lot of things in the right place last year, mm -hmm. but now you had to do a little bit of twisting and turning. Mm -hmm. So, but those aren't the only things that are um, required by the charter. So, for example, on the finance committee, um, there was the opportunity, but not a mandate, mm -hmm. that uh, individual residents of the community could be added to the finance committee who were not town councillors. Because right. all of the committees we've been talking about so far are, counselor, are all right. councillors. Right. These are not multi-member committees. That's These right. are town council right. committees, and so they're councillors. But there's an exception right. in the finance committee. Yes. Remind us about that. So we have put three uh, non-voting but resident members on the finance committee. Um, so while they do not vote, um, their contribution has been really crucial. And it was an experiment. And from all impression that I've gotten, speaking to the chair and hearing from the committee members themselves and the non-resident members, the non-voting members as well, it's been a very successful uh, a, a, a change. So we have then a finance committee with three non-voting resident members, and that's going to continue. That's not going to change. Right. Uh, and their terms are actually two years. So um, they're set. That committee is set, and it's been appointed. Um, the other committees we've been talking about, uh, GOL, TSO, um, uh, they uh, are still to be filled. Um, the, the task of the president over the next few days, uh, she will let us know, I think on March, Monday, March 9th, and the March 16th will go into effect. Um, all the committees then will be filled. Right now, only finance is filled with its uh, three and you resident members. And you mentioned the town council president, yeah. and the reason that's critical is because the charter says... Yeah. Uh, it gives her the authority to make these appointments, and it's it's it always it's and it I think it makes sense just practically speaking mm -hmm. to have 13 of us every year trying to decide who serves on what committee seems to me a recipe for for madness. So mm -hmm. um, she has that power and and use and she's very good about it. She reaches out to all the members and canvasses them, and you know we give our you know, preferences and an order and so on, and then she tries to put it together in a way that that shares out the burden and also gets gets the best people in the right place and, and hopefully in places they'd like to be. So I've enjoyed being on GOL, I've enjoyed being on OCA, um, and uh, I, you know, but I'm basically, uh, the one area where I think I'm the least uh, uh, suited is finance, and so far the president has, not, has chosen not to put me in that place. But if she did, I would do it. Um, can you balance your checkbook? Uh, sort of, yes. <laughs> and can you add and subtract? Yes, I can. Then you could be on I finance. I can try to find <laughs> That's what I've been told. And so perhaps it, it, maybe in the third year I might stick, stick my foot into, the, into those and, waters. And ask for an appointment we'll and see, see if the right, if it president happens. agrees. That's, that's, yeah. right. that's okay. right. Very good. Now, um, yeah. again, uh, without going into detail, mm -hmm. but there are uh, things called multi-member committees, mm -hmm. which basically are things like the planning board mm -hmm. and... Well, planning board and ZBA are appointed by the council. They and are, that, okay. And that's something right now that is, is the responsibility of OCA, um, which soon is going to go out of existence. But for the next few months, it will stay in existence, and its only task will be to perfect, if you wish, the appointments process. That turned out to be a little bit more complicated than we thought. Open meeting law got involved. Um, there was a bit of division, I think, between those of us who felt that, especially with planning board and zoning, where you do have a number, some people applying who have professional reputations, that maybe this shouldn't be out in the public. It should be, you know, people should know who the, the appointees, who the people are, mm -hmm. but interviews in public, and that was an issue. Eventually, it was resolved on the side of transparency, and that's, I think that's fine, um, but it took a while. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's still being perfected. And we, so once the zoning board appointments, there are, number, there are at least three, I think, that are still, we still mm -hmm. have to do. 
and we felt that it was not appropriate or really fair to just throw that to CRC just like that. Yeah. So while it does create a little burden on a few of us to be serving now perhaps on three committees instead of two, um, that'll be for a short time. But that'll phase out. And that will phase quickly. out. And so now I'm realizing I used the wrong terminology yeah, here right. because zoning and planning are all residents, yes, no town council that is sit correct. on it. And, and they're, right. Okay, and uh, so multi-member committees yeah, multi -member are, bodies, right, are right. multi member bodies. Right. Those are groups that are formed which can ha contain both councillors and... Well, well, actually, right. Um, the one body that does have councillors on it that also has residents, that is a multi-member body, mm -hmm. is a newly formed Energy Climate Action Committee, ECAC. Great. And, but other than that, um, where councillors do appear on bodies, they're really um, in, in, with uh, uh, the uh, uh, participatory budgeting and the PVPC, uh, the, 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 the planning, uh, budget planning committee, where they're really working with um, like uh, library trustees um, and, and so forth. There really aren't, other than ECAC, uh, you know, committees where you have residents and counselors in the same body. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, these bodies are appointed, almost all of them exclusively by the town manager, but there still is a role for the council in, in, in a sense, vetting them. So they're brought to us. Um, we often the, council, the uh, uh, town manager is present, and we'll ask him questions, um, and then we recommend to the council that should approve these. Mm -hmm. But the large number of these bodies are appointed by the town manager, but we do have a role of sort of general oversight. And the town manager has been very good about establishing a process. He has a resident advisory committee of three citizens, the three residents who help him uh, recruit and, and evaluate candidates for all these various bodies. And of course we have, we said, the CPO, the community participation officers. But, but Paul's been very good about creating a process and following it and refining it as we've had some mm -hmm. criticisms and contributions to it. And I, we feel that particular function is pretty much set. And that will actually go, that uh, oversight function of town manager appointments will go to, uh, to TSO, will go to the town services uh, committee. So that's a part of the idea of sharing out appointments. Mm -hmm. One of the councillors uh, who voted against the uh, change, we actually had four councillors vote against it, the vote was nine to four. One of them felt that we should have appointments only committee. We should keep OCA mm -hmm. as appointments only. And uh, clearly the majority of the councillors did not agree. Uh, they liked the idea of sharing it out. So that was a nine to four vote? A nine to four and vote, and mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't unanimous. <clears throat> Um, and uh, but that was one objection that was presented was that you know well we should keep appointments in all one committee. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's also there was some concern about TSO and that its charge was was too broad. They wanted it narrowed, and um, so that was another. So concern. trading uh, one broad committee for another broad committee you know, was their uh, their worry. Apparently, I, but, so I, there was a very I didn't agree, but a <laughs> very robust debate. Yes, there was. And, yes, um, yeah, yeah. But in the end, it was a, a supermajority. Yes, it was in favor of the new yeah. structure. Yeah. And it's, so it sounds like. Um, as as we're in the first quarter of our second year yeah. in the government, yeah. that the appointments process is kind of settling in. There, again, there's going to be a, a change in terms of where right. in the council right. where it sits. Yes. these are going to be vetted, right. yeah. but the system of identifying candidates, mm -hmm. interviewing them, yeah. sorting through, getting yeah. recommendations, that's working pretty well. Yes, it is. And yeah. The town continues to want to focus on trying to diversify the base of applicants. That is a long-range you know, goal. It's a yeah. difficult one, but it's one we're very conscious of, yes. In yeah. many different respects, yeah. where you are in town, where right. you are in the economy, right. what your personal profile is, all of those yeah. things yeah. are very much on people's minds. Yes, they are. Uh, but the system is, is basically settling in, yeah. and we have this one new major change, which is how it gets handled uh, at, the, at the council level. Mm -hmm. But if everything goes well over the course of this year, that mm -hmm. will settle in as well. That's the hope. And if it works well, then our, our recruitment and uh, our recruitment and uh, review mm -hmm. and ultimate decision-making process will pretty well be settled in um, mm -hmm. within the first two years of that, the new That is what we hope, charter. absolutely. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's switch gears here for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, library and oh, yes. construction, <laughs> and we have four big capital, capital projects. projects. Yes. Some people are talking about a fifth parking garage, and there are different scenarios right. about how we might do a parking garage. Right. We're going to be doing a segment on that uh, yeah. very, very soon. Good. And uh, but Good. you. Um, uh, you have some particular thoughts and concerns well, I think, right. relative to the library in particular. I think as probably many uh, folks out there know and should know that um, we're going to have to make a decision on the library uh, fairly soon, certainly by the summer, and we're going to have to make a decision with imperfect knowledge. We're not going to unfortunately know where we stand with the school, with the DPW and the fire station. And um, so we're going to have to, the council will, this will be done in public. We will have at least one. I know the president's already arranging for at least one uh, council meeting to be focused on the library. We're waiting for some numbers from the trustees and from the, right, from the library in terms of what a, we have two options in front of us, it seems. One is to accept the state money and do a kind of expansion renovation. The other is to uh, do simply a kind of, 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 of renovation. And that second option would be paid for only by the town. The state would not make any contribution. So the question is, what will, what will be the difference between doing simply a kind of renovation paid for simply from town monies versus what it would cost us to take the state money and make our contribution? Right now, the numbers, we just don't know. But if the numbers are fairly close, that will be interesting. Um, but bottom line is we're going to have to make this decision one way or the other uh, within the next few months, and we're going to have to make and it with and the imperfect reason, knowledge. And the yeah. reason that it's in the next few months is tied to the state grant That's process? That's right. right, right. And how long do, does the town have in which to make a decision once you're given the green light by the state? I think it, we really have to make a decision by the summer, by one the way or the other. One way or the other, and that's then the decision is take the money, state money or not. Mm -hmm. And if we say take the state money, right, then we have to come up with matching funds. That's correct. Some of which would be privately raised. That's right. And some of which would be come appropriated from the by the town. Right. Uh, and it then competes the, to the extent that that's right. We're talking about town money. Right. It competes with uh, new school uh, right. construction right. needs. Yeah. A new DPW building mm -hmm. and a new fire station. That's right. That's right. And of course, we've we haven't had a new DPW building since goodness knows. I when. know. Whenever the trolley barn was and built, it's <laughs> been many years since the North Amherst fire station right. was built. Right. And there's right. still no right. Um, right. facility in South Amherst, which has grown dramatically and That's continues right. to grow. Right. I think everyone agrees that there's that there is real need for all of these projects. And my personal feeling, for what it's worth, and it's just my personal feeling, is that we must do all of them. We c and we have to space it out a bit. Um, we men I mentioned earlier to you public-private partnership. Maybe that's an option for one of them. We're looking for some way to, to ease some of the financial burden. But I don't see how we can avoid it. We need to do all of them. Um, but as you said, we also need to figure out how we're going to pay for how you How do you pay for exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately, the library process is such that we need to make a decision even though we don't know how the others are going to play out. And so I think that's going to be a, an interesting decision by yeah. the council. And, and the only reason that w it, the library decision has to come first is not because of our no, need, right. it's because of the state situation. Right. Exactly. And you mentioned that you were hearing that they're going to make some changes at the state level in terms of the Yeah, this program, program. Is, is phasing out. Um, it's not clear what will replace it. Um, certainly it won't be as generous, I think, as it has been in the past. And if we do decide to pass on this money, it would be many years, if ever, that the state would be able to offer us money for a, a, an expansion renovation. The other thing I'll say just briefly about what the state is of the, 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 the uh, what the trustees have in mind is it actually is a restoration as well. It's not just an expansion. It's actually right. going to be money, and some of the money is actually earmarked and, and, and has to be used for restoring the beauty of, of the Jones, as right. both in interior. And the exterior will not be touched. It will, it will be the Jones as it's always looked. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it offers, offer, the state process offers us an opportunity also to re preserve and restore a lot of the historical beauty that's in the existing Jones. Yeah, and it's interesting because the uh, Jones Library uh, construction project of the 1980s mm -hmm. was the very uh, is was funded in the very first round of the mm -hmm. library construction right. program, and isn't it <laughs> ironic that <laughs> we're yeah. being pressed for a decision yeah. in what right. might be yeah. the last year right. of the of, existing known this program, program. Yes. Yes. and we don't know what it'll morph into. But right. interesting because uh, 
you, you, you think about once a government program is established, it never goes no. away. <laughs> uh, but here's an example. Roughly 30 years yeah. later, I think yeah. it was 1980. Yeah. Seven, right. uh, 88, uh, 87 right. or 88, we right. voted on it in the legislature. Right. And I think the first grants went out at, in very early 90s. That's right. That's right. And so it's about a quarter of a century since uh, right. we got that major grant, and yeah. it was one of the larger ones and maybe the largest mm -hmm. that was given in that first in round. In that first round, so, yeah. So we benefited handsomely yes, we from... Have the uh, state's commitment yeah. to public libraries. And yeah. before we went on the air, we were talking a little bit about you know, right. the value of libraries yes, to yes, society. Yes, especially in this town and the history of the Jones at the center of our town, for me, means a lot. Well, thank you very much for bringing us up to date on committees Thanks, and getting us thinking about our public construction agenda, which yeah. uh, is uh, coming down upon us yes. so quickly. Uh, important needs for the community, but always the challenge of how do you pay for it, especially when you have so many big projects yeah. that people are uh, saying that we need all right. at the same time. Right. But that's the way it is. At least we have a voice in it, and we yes. get to participate in, yes, the, we do. in the debate, in the discussion, and ultimately in the decisions. Yeah. And with that, we thank you very much for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again. And, George, thank you. Thank Keep you, up the good work, thank you and you. your uh, counselors, fellow counselors, and, and uh, give them all our best. Great. See you again soon.